Hello, welcome back to 1923, the true story behind the Yellowstone prequels American Indian Boarding School. Warning, spoilers ahead, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. A startlingly accurate portrayal of forced integration schemes launched by Western settlers and Christian missionaries can be found in the Yellowstone prequel spin-off, 1923. Throughout the first episode of 1923, viewers see Sister Mary O'Connor repeatedly strike Tiana with a wooden ruler for forgetting how to make soap in class. The offended student punches her attacker repeatedly in the face as the stunned class looks on in terror as she pins her to the ground. Father Renaud learns about the situation and punishes both of them for breaching the principles upon which the Catholic boarding school was founded. Unfortunately, the terrifying scenes from the 1923 premiere episode paint a very accurate picture of the brutality that took place in these Indian boarding schools to suppress the Native American youngsters of Montana. These institutions were established to civilize the Native Americans of America and convert them to the Western way of life. They were founded by Western settlers and government missionaries, and they were frequently funded by the church. The true story behind the Indian boarding schools. The forced assimilation of indigenous communities taking place inside the American Indian boarding schools is the basis for Father Renaud and Sister Mary's ruthless attitude toward the indigenous youngsters of Montana and their mistreatment of Tiana. In the late 19th century, the government coerced families to send their kids to these church-run schools, where they were brainwashed into believing that their native culture was inferior to the one brought by Western settlers. They were forced to use English exclusively and were punished if they said even a single word in their own dialect. These institutions didn't exist in large numbers at first, one of them was the Fort Shaw Indian School in Montana. Yet, it wasn't long before almost 200 more sprung up all over the country, with the majority of them operating in places like South Dakota, Minnesota, and Oklahoma. These schools were also required to enroll a large number of U.S. code talkers, who later recalled encounters similar to the one depicted in the Yellowstone prequel offshoot. They tell us not to speak in the Navajo language because you're going to school, Navajo American code talker John Brown Jr. remarked. You are only permitted to use English. It was accurate. They did that, and we were punished if we were heard using Navajo. The elimination of traditional American Indian ways of life. The goal of these churches run boarding schools was to destroy the traditional Indian way of life and mentally subjugate the Native Americans into believing that only Western civilization represents a moral, civilized lifestyle. The destruction of indigenous language and culture was so subtle and systematic that, after some initial resistance, Indian families would send their own children to Indian boarding schools because they had no other option. To guarantee that the impact of their own culture remained as unclear in their young, naive minds as possible, students were forcibly removed from their families, sometimes for years on end. They were forced to give up their original names and adopt church-assigned, Christian names in addition to being forced to speak English. In order to prepare for a life of military service, they were also created to endure in a setting that was exceptionally strict and overtly disciplined. The hatred for indigenous culture was so ingrained in society that teachers made it a point to make fun of their students frequently for having inferior roots and brainwashed them into believing that their culture was something to be ashamed of. The indigenous children could not return to their roots even after leaving the boarding school since they were made to consider them deviant and repulsive at a young age, which meant that the cultural repression and manipulation would start at that age. The Indian boarding schools portrayed themselves as providing valuable instruction despite the brutal eradication of a whole civilization and the cruel treatment of native students. After all, Western settlers invested in these institutions for a reason, and while elevating their culture above all others was one of their main objectives, it wasn't the only one. The government only desired a unified military front, while the church sought to educate civilized people who would be well-versed in the Christian way of life. As a result, arithmetic, physics, literature, and other intellectual disciplines were taught to the students at the boarding schools, but it was carefully monitored that none of them portrayed the indigenous culture favorably. Girls were also offered art lessons, such as music and painting, and were encouraged to excel in practical areas like carpentry, agriculture, cooking, and printing. Thank you for watching.